Hello, this is Jacob Bolton, Associate Pastor of Formation here at Westminster Presbyterian Church of Alexandria. This coming Sunday night, the Formation team is hosting a conversation surrounding the book and the film, The Hate You Give. A ton of people are signed up and our conversation is going to be rich. I'm greatly looking forward to it. Now, of course, I read the book in preparation for our discussion and was deeply moved by the vibrant storytelling of author Angie Thomas. A theme that resonated with me throughout the book was the concept of community. The story arc weaves through a time in the life of Star, the main character, as she searches to find her place within the two communities in which she spends her life. Her home in Garden Heights and her school at Williamson Prep. Though many things are in place to keep these two communities separate, the people, the geography, it is race and all of the cultural background that comes with it as the literary backdrop onto which the rest of the narrative action takes place. But the Garden Heights and Williamson Prep duality is really only one of the many communities within the book that Starr recognizes and through which she must navigate her life. Though not a key element in the story, it's clear that on one level, her basketball teammates form a close-knit community for Star at school. Numerous characters comment on what type of community they may or may not have gotten out of joining either the King Lords or the Garden Disciples. Star's family which she herself wrestles with how best to define is a source of community. And even though we do not see the story world through his eyes, it's pretty clear to this reader that his family and the police force are a community for Officer 115. In a story in which so many lines are blurred, identity, family, loyalty, ethics, power. Almost every character searches for their place in a community, one that will alleviate the pressure and the reality of the situation in which they find themselves and provide some sort of support and acknowledgement along the way. The story is full of moments when those communities are reimagined. And I would argue that the communities through which Star navigates are so prevalent throughout the book, they're basically characters unto themselves. Now in our COVID-19 world, all of the lines lifted up in the hate you give are blurred, aren't they? Identity, family, loyalty, ethics, power, in this time of reimagination, what is your community? And how is it changing? How is your concept of family changing? Since I was on sabbatical last summer, I've actually been home, either because of sabbatical or because of COVID-19, for eight of the last 13 months of my life. The way that we exist as a family is changing because of that. Power. Power is no longer who controls the room, but who controls the Zoom. Identity. What happens when you base your identity around a cultural norm that no longer exists? Too many of us are finding that out. Who is? What are? the communities that are giving you life, that are giving you hope as you strive to find your place. What are those communities that are giving you support? About seven weeks ago now, I fell and I badly injured my leg. No one of course would really know this because you pretty much only see my face on Zoom, but I wore a boot and I was on crutches. The day I was told that I needed crutches, 
I knew there would be at least one pair in the medical supply room at Westminster. So I put on my boot, left the doctor's office, and drove over to WPC. Now, yes, I know the church was closed, but hey, being clergy does have a few privileges, doesn't it? And so I hobbled downstairs and found a great pair of crutches. I've used these crutches for at least the last four or five weeks. While on these crutches, I've needed to reimagine how I parent, how I pastor, how I live out the work of God at a different place, or excuse me, at a different pace while I've needed these crutches. And though this injury has provided me and my family a change of pace during our collective change of pace, all I can think of every time I lean forward and put my weight on, all, on them is of the numerous church members who have borrowed these same crutches during their time of need before me. These crutches have, have provided support, stability for so many of our church family, and now including me, and will continue to in the years to come. If all goes well, I'll be done with these crutches by the end of the week, and I can return them to the church, and their legacy can continue, providing someone else a leg up in their time of need. Now, I'm sure that your experience is full of your own stories similar to mine, clear moments, right, of when your community provided you with something greater, something unexpected that helped support you or encourage you, or at least made those difficult times in your life a little less difficult. And we all take the time to notice the sacred community in which we are all a part and give thanks for the care that we both give and receive. Much love, hold fast. <laughs>